Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content, and check out the Discord link as well. Here we are. Um, I have a little error from the last video I just want to resolve. So if I run the game, we're gonna I'm going to show you something. So if you're up top here, and you go to the left or right, we're going to go outside of the screen. But if you're like a little bit below the exactly the top and you try to go out, it won't work. Top won't work. This won't work. There's one corner case here that is bugging out. And I, I should have resolved that in the last video, but I didn't. The issue is here that once this global bounds variable is stored in this local variable, this one, uh, if we go ahead and change the position of the player to the top, for example, uh, this won't be updated and it's going to use the 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 same variable same values from way before in the next calculation when it should actually be updated here so we have two options either we can update this in after each of these or we can save some coding space and just call this directly now instead of writing rewriting everything what you can do is you can do control f in your ide and you should get something like um, something like replace just like that so for example Click this little arrow here for Visual Studio and you should be able to replace stuff. And I'm going to do, uh, where is it, match whole word, alright? And we're going to do this. I'm going to say player bounds. Wherever we find a player bounds thing, yeah, wherever we find that, including this, we're going to remove that later. I'm going to replace that with this. So this shape dot get global bounds. Okay, and just go ahead and do replace all. And we don't have to rewrite everything. You don't have to worry that it's bugging out. Um, because now we're going to get exactly what we wanted. So for example, here now it's this shape, get global bounds. It does look like more text, but it's a lot better than updating that local variable each time. Another thing we could have done is made a reference out of it. But since this global bounds returns a copy of whatever, yeah, see the float rect is a copy it's not a reference then that won't work it will just refer to that copy so if you're not 100 percent sure on references and stuff like that you should check out c plus plus as well as pointers uh, and all that stuff get that uh, learn all of that and you should be good once you do that we shouldn't have this issue anymore run the game go up top and see if uh, you can let's see if we can do that corner case all right so now we're not going outside no matter where we are since we're using the updated values so now we have all our corner cases set up and we're good to go the next step is going to be in our game <coughs> excuse me in our game to capture a lot of swag balls but what is a swag ball is the question that's what everybody's been asking what is a swag ball now a swag ball is just a little circle shape and it's going to have different colors it's going to have um the different sizes and we're going to play around with that all right and that's going to happen when we create the swag ball. Before we do that, we need to make sure random is initialized. And if we look in our main, it should be initialized. Static cast random here, right here. So that means we can randomize our shape as much as we want. Let's start off here in init shape. This, all right, this circle shape or this shape. Let's see what options we have. We have fill color. Let's go to set actually. We can set the radius, the position, point count, which will make it less than round or whatever you want. You can have different shapes of circles. It doesn't have to be exactly nice circles. Basically, all they are are a bunch of points all around with lines drawn between them. But you can you can uh, um, what do you call it? You can you can make make less points and make it more pointy kind of. Anyway, you can set the rotation, scale, all that stuff, texture, blah blah blah. Uh, but what we're looking at is setting setting the radius and the color for now. So let's start off with the radius. It takes a float value. Okay. And what we want to do is a static cast to float of a random integer value. Static cast. There we go. Now I'm just going to do rand. And how big of these radiuses do we want? We want a static cast rand. Um, maybe a radius of, I don't know. What can we do? What can we do? 
um, 10 plus 5, so that would be 15, 10, no, what would that be? Uh, 15, no, 10 plus 10 maybe, something like that. Yeah, something like that. We'll have that. That's fine. Um, and then we're going to have a few colors here. Let's let's make all kinds of different colors. All right, let's do that. Uh, SF color, color. And here we're going to set a lot of random colors. Um, let's see. Uh, rand. Here we go. 255. Do the same thing here. We might make them transparent. That's not something we want. Um, like that. Plus one. All right. What we could do is keep it like that for now, and then we'll play around with that later. This shape dot set fill color color very simple good now we have a radius and a color that is very random to us um, and looking at this let me think all right that should be good for now I want to be able to render it though so down here in the render function I'm gonna say target dot draw this shape very simple updating we don't need to care about that right now and that is very good, very nice. We might want some of these shapes to move, so we'll do that in update. Um, okay, let's go back to game and let us test this out. First of all, in game.h, make sure you include swag balls. Include swag ball.h. And we're gonna create a container for swag balls. Uh, std vector swag balls, like that, very simple. We need to also include uh, vector. Boom. Good. Very nice. Oh, it's supposed to be. Sorry about that. Swag balls. Always hit my mic. Um, why is that not working? Uh, balls. And this should be with a capital S. Swag balls. Swag ball. Sorry. Uh, what is that? Swag. Swag ball, okay, fine, all right, works. Good, very good, very good. In the update function of game, we want to spawn some balls. To spawn the balls, we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need the swag balls vector, obviously. We're gonna need a float uh, spawn timer max. Float spawn timer, two things, and then an integer. Yeah, we can use an int or an unsign, whatever. Int max swag balls. Three things that we want to initialize. And we'll do that up in game.cpp in init variables. This uh, spawn timer max equals, let's say 10.f. This spawn timer equals, or we can do this. this Spawn timer max because that will make sure that the first swag ball is spawned directly. This, the final one, this max swag balls is going to be about ten balls right now. We can we can fix that later. We have our frame frame rate limit at sixty. That's great. Make sure you have that. Good. Next step is going to be to void spawn swag balls. And this is going to take care of pretty much everything for us when it comes to swag balls. Spawning at least. Uh, maybe not the collision part, but at least the spawning part. Functions. No, that's not the correct place. Should be there. Good. Alright. Now we're going to take care of the swag balls part. So, first of all, we're going to take care of the timer. If this um, spawn timer is less than this spawn timer max plus this spawn timer plus equals 1.f so we can change this how fast we want this to increase but i'll keep it at 1.f okay 
if okay else this is when we're gonna spawn something so otherwise if we've reached it we're gonna set this spawn timer equals 0 0.f and also if this uh, swag balls so our container of balls if the size of that is less than this max swag ball so just to limit how many balls we can spawn then we're gonna do all this stuff then we're gonna spawn something uh, here we go whoops there we go good nice so we'll, we'll reset that so we can spawn another ball very good and then to actually spawn them we're gonna say this swag balls dot pushback um, swag ball and we could create a swag ball in here and it's just gonna be empty right now because because we have that constructor is very empty we need to init shape in here in swag ball .cpp. don't forget that otherwise we're gonna have a problem now we should be able to create a ball that is actually visible to us go into game.cpp good right above this let's say this spawn swag balls and then we'll render make a little for loop here um, let's make a for each loop for auto i this swag balls i dot render this window all right looks good looks good dereference the window since it's a reference and let's run this let's see okay come on okay nice see lots of 10 10 balls with different colors that's great now we need to do one last thing before we end this video is to randomize the position so this shape and to do that we need to send in our window so we know the window bounds sf render window pointer window or we'll just do reference we could do reference uh, to make it a little easier const copy that put that into the constructor as well send in window here okay we're all doing this in the cpp file just just kind of keep sending it in in this in this way uh, and then swagballs.h here, I've said swag balls a few too many times this video. I'm sorry about that. There we go. And that's in the swag balls H file. And uh, you should be good to go. Should be good to go. Now, dot set position. Very nice. Very nice. SF vector 2F. I hate to do this, but in SFML, you have to, for positions mostly, if you hover over these functions, they'll tell you what, the, what you need. So most, usually it's a vector 2F. For these kind of things um, but just put that in there and now we're going to do a this is going to be long so static cast to a float okay two parentheses comma and just copy this whole thing put it right here okay now rand boom window dot get size dot x let me open this up a little so you can see what's going on. That is the X part. That is the Y part. And this is the whole function, right? This is the Y part. So the X part is going to go from 0 to the size of the window. Minus this shape that get, get global bounds that width. Now that I know this is long and confusing. Don't freak out. Basically what we're doing is we're randomizing from 0 to the window's right, most right side. But remember, what happens, our box or our circle is going to be outside since we're counting the top left point um, of the shape. So we need to minus that with the width so we kind of get the shape in. Try to remove this and see what happens for your for your own sake, just so you know what, what the hell's going on. But you should, you should have that, it should work. And then we're going to do height here and y here. And you should be good. Now, if you run this, you should get a bunch of swag balls all over the screen. 
uh, unless you crash, which isn't something you like. Error. Oh, okay. This window. Okay. Dereference that as well. And you should be good to go. So there wasn't too much of a SFML tutorial here. But now you can see a bunch of these uh, popping up all over. And we can go around and we can probably pick these up. And we could probably grow in size. We can make one of those IO games. Yeah, well, that's what we could do. But for one player. <laughs> so that's that's cool. I don't know why this is coming here since I put it at zero. But whatever. We'll figure that out. Um, oh, well, yeah, I know why. I know why. I know why. Because we're doing minus width no matter no matter what. Um, but, yeah, don't worry about that. We'll fix that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. I know it was a little fast and jumpy, but try to slow it down. Pa pause the video if you don't understand some things. Try to deconstruct the code. Do stuff on your own. Find out some ways you can, you can customize this even more, all right? Thank you so much. Take care. Check out the description box. Drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.